we know that the half-life is the time required for the radioactive substance, if you have 100% of it, the half-life, the T1 half, which could be 24,110 years for an isotope like plutonium-239, uh, it would take that much amount of time for the radioactivity to decrease by half. So that would mean, depending on 100%, or if you have 100 grams, or 1,000 kilograms, this is going to take a long time for just that mass to get to half of its original radioactivity. So you can see how this curve flattens out over time, it takes the same amount of years to get halfway, and getting to zero therefore takes a very long time, particularly for something that already takes a long time just to get to half, and uh, that is the case with many of the radioactive isotopes that are used at nuclear sites for nuclear um, fission reactions. So that is just one of the many issues that makes nuclear energy complicated. So though there are pros, it's clean, um, it's considered sustainable because there's no carbon emissions or air pollutants and can be built in any country, uh, this can meet the demands of electricity for any country for the future. But the downsides are pretty clear. Nuclear weapons, uh, if gotten into the wrong hands, nuclear waste, uh, that's the long-lived products of nuclear fission reactions. And um, there's no, no country has a permanent plan for how to store nuclear waste. There have been a couple accidents we'll look at, and they're expensive to build. Uh, the startup cost is not insignificant, and then continuing, continually maintaining uh, and um, providing fuel, as well as keeping the entire power plant secure. Uh, this is keeping it from having a nuclear meltdown accident, as well as keeping the, um, the uranium fuel uh, safe from getting into the wrong hands. Which is against building more nuclear reactors is the possibility of accidents. So this is an example of Chernobyl. This was in 1986. This is in eastern Russia, Ukraine. And what happened was that it was during a routine check of the control rod assembly um, that they, uh, so this was a human error. When you remove those control rods, you have the potential of overheating because they absorb those excess neutrons. So this uh, meltdown led to an explosion that released radioactivity into the atmosphere. 250 million Russians were exposed to the ionizing radiation. It's not known exactly because Russia hasn't published the information, but more than 30 years later, the whole area is still closed off. Um, one thing that led to a lot of public distrust was the fact that uh, the government did not, the government of Russia did not disclose any of this. And Europe, this is very close to Europe, Europe was actually the first to report these uh, radioactivity in their atmospheres, and only then did was there an admission that there had been a meltdown at the Chernobyl site. So it's not only human errors that can lead to nuclear meltdowns, but also this is an example of a natural, a natural disaster that happened then led to a meltdown at Fukushima in 2011. So this is in Japan. And so as I mentioned that the uh, nuclear reactors are usually sited near large bodies of water, so near an ocean. And um, Japan actually is a good place for nuclear electric power because they don't have coal um, being an island and uh, there but there's plenty of water so there are rat reactors now this is the issue happened was that there was an earthquake and then a tsunami and so electricity went out power and electricity is needed to constantly have water pumping through the systems that cool off the, the, the secondary water. So when this uh, power went out and the electricity, then, the, then this meltdown happened when the cooling system stopped. So this led to uh, the meltdown and then release of radioactivity into the area as well as then into the ocean. So that creates a problem as well. That's um, not man-made. 
Now considered more dangerous than a nuclear meltdown, um, not at least acutely, but there's been a steady accumulation of nuclear waste at every single nuclear reactor site in the world. The United States has uh, dithered over this, this clear and present danger for decades with no plan in sight. Um, for decades, one plan that had been discussed was to store nuclear waste, so that's the spent fuel that is still radioactive for millions or of years, for thousands of generations, spent fuel will be radioactive and it cannot be used as fuel. It's those other atoms like barium and krypton that are still radioactive isotopes. So for decades it was proposed to um, use this underground site. This is under Yucca Mountain in southern Nevada and you can see this is uh, near Las Vegas. Have this repository and have this long-term storage. Um, this has was proposed um, but never passed. Um, so this also leads to how do you label something that is dangerous for generations to come? This is actually a whole branch called nuclear semiotics when radioactive waste will be dangerous for for thousands or millions of years. How do you label that for coming generations? Currently there's more than 70,000 tons of spent fuel stored at 70 sites in 39 states, which means that 33% of Americans live within 50 miles of a storage site. And that includes us in Los Angeles and Santa Monica because we're near that San Onofre site. So experts agree that a geologic repository remains the only viable long-term solution. Every country in the world has this issue and no country yet has solved this issue of what to do with their spent fuel. So though we have established that nuclear power is uh, very promising in terms of helping the world reduce its carbon emissions, it, there are some downsides. And so is there a future for nuclear power? Um, Already, nuclear power plants are already in use all over the world. 20% of uh, power in the U.S. is produced by nuclear plants. And um, this is not just in the U.S., but worldwide. I had already mentioned that Asia is on track to build 100 new nuclear plants and will surpass the U.S. in terms of how many there are. So, but we have a lot in operation in America and um, this is as true in Europe as well. So Europe Central and Europe and Asia, but uh, there are some issues. And so these will have to be dealt with in the coming years if we're going to expand nuclear power.